Hello everyone, this is Stephen from Share Navigator with a stock market update and it's May the 13th. So I'm going to focus a lot of this session, guys, on what we're going to do with our short uh, futures position. So, um, But first, I'll just go through a brief rundown of the S&P 500. So you can see on Friday's action, pretty much nothing happened in the market, but it was up 0.17 of a percent. The futures at the moment, 0.1 of a percent up. So the market, as we spoke about last week, is marking time ahead of really important data that's coming out on Wednesday. We've got retail sales and the all-important inflation data. Um, and there's going to be a number of knock-on impacts on the, of the inflation data, both on the stock market, on the currency markets, and on the bond markets. Um, and if you look here as well, in at the 10-year bond yield, you can see that's kind of marking time as well. Pretty much not doing anything. Uh, the 10-year is still at 4.9%. And if you look at the euro dollar, just as an example, after the initial uh, rally back up, we spoke about this down here, about switching out of the dollars, and it's been a good move, which is great. Um, and now it's kind of marking time right below this, these moving averages here. So you can see we have the stock market marking time, we've got the currency markets market marking time, and we have the bond markets marking time. So what are they marking time over? Well, um, on Wednesday, we get as I said, retail sales and inflation data. Now, the inflation data is really, really important um, because if the inflation data continues to come in worse than expected, like the move has been recent in the most recent trajectory, um, you know, you, what you could see is bond yields go up again um, and the dollar actually strengthen on the back of that. And the reason for that is that the expectations of rate cuts gets diminished. Then on the flip side of that, if the inflation data comes in better than expected, um, you could have actually bond yields retreat, you could have the US dollar weaken. And the reason for that then is, of course, the market is now expecting that maybe the, the government will, or the Fed will cut rates sooner or even more aggressively than expected. So leading into this, guys, recently, the most recent jobs data has actually been kind of worse than expected, which has been good for the stock market, believe it or not. So you wouldn't expect that better jobs data would be better for the stock market, but not in this case, because the way the market is looking into this is that, you know what, if if the bond market, or sorry, if the jobs market is worse than expected, the Federal Reserve are more likely to cut rates. And that's why the market has actually gone up. Um, if you come back here to, if we go back into the bond yields again, um, you know, this is what we're holding. You've seen the bond yield was at 4.7%. The market was seven, selling off heavily before when that when that happened during this period of time. We spoke about it before when this happened. We kind of measured this move here before and what the knock-on impact was in the stock market. Uh, going back to the stock market here, you can see, you know, when we measure that, and that's the exact same correlation here with uh, bond yields going from 55 to 5%. So you can see what happened in the market. It actually sold off 11%. So... We're, we're at four and a half percent now. If that data comes in uh, better than expected on, on Wednesday, you might see the market actually continue on up. And then on the flip side, if it actually comes in worse than expected, you're going to see maybe the market actually take a severe correction downwards. Um, so it is that binary, in my opinion. Um, so reading into that, what do we do with our existing short futures position? I think it's very important. We're only going to do keep this really, really simple. We're actually just going to buy call options, and we're going to buy at the call, um, at the money call options that expire on Friday. So if you think about it, the mar the news is coming out on Wednesday. The market's going to make its move on Wednesday and Thursday after this news is out. Um, so we only really need something to cover us till Friday. And I'm not going to even finance it. I'm not going to turn it into a bull call spread. I'm literally going to buy an at-the-money call for the futures options. So what does that do? Well, if you think about it, we're short on the futures. We want the market to drop. But what happens if it continues on up after the inflation data? Well, then these call options will protect us from the market moving up. One will offset the gain and one will be offset by the loss and the other from there on in. So you're not going to be any worse off. Now, there's a cost to that. But we're not going to pay for that cost straight away. So one of two things is going to happen. The market is either going to drop. So let's say it drops. Well, then at that stage, what we'll do is sell a put option to pay for original call. So we'll have lost on the call we bought as protection, right? 
but the income we will receive from the put options will actually pay for that original call okay and we'll put that on after the news is out if the market does drop okay on the flip side if the market rallies on up what we can do there is the, the call option is going to be in a big gain what we can do is a number of things at that stage we can close our short futures position take the hit on that and, and take the gain on the on the long call or we can actually yeah, sell another call on top of that at a higher strike which will turn it into a bull call spread which in effect actually pays for what we just bought a couple of days ago so that's going to be the strategy so just to be clear on that we're just going to buy an at the money call option and i'll probably do that today just to take the risk off the table um and what that's going to do is protect us from any upside move in the stock market we will finance it later on um, so after the data the news is out we don't really care at that stage we would prefer if it came down but if it doesn't and it goes on up we're not going to be any worse off then we will finance that call option by either selling the call or just actually sell selling the call that we bought or actually selling another call above it um, and turning it into a bull call spread so i'm going to create a separate video on that when i do it just so it's clear but I think um, the strategy I wanted to just outline it in this meeting today as well. So that's going to be it. Wednesday is really a big day for the market as such. And I expect the market not to do a hell of a lot between now and then. Um, same with the bond markets, same with the currency markets. Um, what I want to bring to your attention as well, if you look at our active trader watch list, two more Mercedes actually from uh, the European markets, that's actually um, come into our active trader watch list. So the fundamentals on this suggest a 15, 16% upside. And another stock now, we've added the fundamental data into our US uh, stock watch list. It's a company called CorePay. That has about a 20% fundamental upside potential. Um, we've got alerts for those when the um, RSI, five-day RSI crosses back above 20. Now again, I would prefer to wait until Wednesday's out of the way before engaging in any of these trades, but what I will say to you is, I've been trading these privately, every single alert that came my way, traded every single one of them. And we're at now over 92% success rate on it. And if you look at FedEx, we didn't train this, trade this last week, it came into our watch list. We said we were gonna wait and let it run. You know, um, we got the alert here this day to buy it, 258, it's up at 265 now. So, you know, that was a 3% a gain there that potentially could have been got just on that one trade there alone in a couple of days. So that's no longer in the watch list, of course, it's gone, that trade is out of the way, but these two are. So we may actually go ahead and trade these, um, irrespective, because the statistics are piling up so great. But I will emphasize and will stress that Wednesday's data can change sentiment in a heartbeat for the good or for the bad and i don't know which way it's going to go i have absolutely no idea and i don't think anybody does for the people who are compiling the data and um, so for me though the market at this moment in time is actually leaning towards it's actually going to be good for the market uh, obviously it's broken through the 50-day moving average the recent jobs data is really helping that narrative the fact that it was a little bit worse than expected weaker than expected and then throw in the retail sales as well on Wednesday. If they come in weaker than expected, you know, again, that will might put a push on the Fed to cut rates sooner. Uh, because that's a sign, obviously, the consumer isn't spending as much money. And you would think that would actually cause a sell-off in equities. It might cause a sell-off in some retail stocks. But actually, broadly speaking, for the market, it'll be positive because the central bank is more likely to cut rates. If you think about it, rate cuts are good for the stock market in the future. Um, because the companies are able to generate more profits, consumers will have more money to spend, etc., like that. And then the discounted valuation model and equities is using a, a lower weighted average cost of capital. So um, I just wanted to keep you updated on the markets there. So we may go ahead and trade these guys, but I wanted just everybody to be clear, you know, um, if we do go ahead and trade these, you know, make sure you, you, you understand that Wednesday's announcements in the market could move the market negatively which will impact everything you know so in my opinion so uh, we'll just have to wait and see it might become a drab affair as well it, it, you know it really could go either way because if it comes in bang on target what way does the market interpret that um, uh, and we just don't know we're gonna have to wait and see what happens but at the moment uh, i would probably suggest the market is leaning more positively than negatively and probably anticipating 
a weaker than expected set of uh, inflation figures and we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, I've covered bond yields and FX, so I don't need to do that again. Looking at energy, so I spoke about last week the fact that with natural gas, you know, the RSIs were kind of in the deeply overbought area and that probably a breeder was due. We got that breeder, it really peaked out here, but this is really bullish, guys. The fact that the highs kept getting higher um, and we kind of broke above this little resistance area here. Okay, it didn't stay above it. We're taking a little breather now. And that's why I'm saying I wouldn't buy any more, but this is really positive. The fact that we're even just hovering here, we haven't done kind of a big straight down. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me to peel back to two here if it did. Um, but I do think that this is really, really positive for our UNG and N and GASP positions. Um, I would hold on to them, but I wouldn't buy any more. That hasn't changed. Um, and then finally on metals, um, just it's looked, it's the same story, guys. We probably won't be doing anything in these for quite some time until there's a significant correction here. So look, it's sell, copper, sell, silver, whole gold. Uh, nothing has changed there. So just a very, very quick summary here. For anyone holding the short futures position today, I'm going to do a separate video. I'm going to buy the call options um, to protect our existing short futures position. That allows us stay in the game, okay? So if the inflation data is bad for the markets and the markets sell off, well, then our short futures positions will gain, which will be great. Okay, the call we just bought will lose. But we don't mind that because we're going to be gaining in this and we'd rather have the protection in place. Um, and then we might be able to let that trade run and turn that into a nice significant profit. We'll just have to wait and see. Then the benefit of owning that is that if the market does jump on up, we're not going to be any worse off um, on our short futures because we'll have gained in our long call that we just bought. Okay, And we're going to finance the purchase of that after the data is released by either selling a put option or potentially selling another call option above the one that we just bought. Uh, um, so that's the strategy going forward, okay? Uh, any questions on that, folks, please don't hesitate to reach out and contact me. Okay, this is a stock market update on May the 13th. Thanks and bye for now.